Good morning and welcome as we continue to explore where is Jesus found in the Psalms. And we have been in, in the past few uh, videos discussing Christ from a third person or a narrative type of a view, from the outside looking in. And now we're going to be looking at some psalms that speak of Christ in the second person point of view. In other words, as if someone were speaking directly to Christ. And we're going to start in the verse, uh, I'm sorry, in, in Psalm 45. And Psalm 45 is a descriptive psalm. It's a psalm that gives praise and adoration and it describes the glory of Christ to Christ, recognizing his majesty, his kingship, his rulership over all. And in Psalm 45 and 6, it says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. And in this psalm, it describes the glories of, of Christ. He is addressed as a king, possessed of all the essential graces, as a conqueror, exalted on the throne of a righteous and eternal government. We see that this conqueror, while the Jewish people in the time when Jesus walked the earth in a physical uh, manner, the Jewish people were expecting this mighty conqueror that was going to come through and fight off all the Gentiles and free them from, from Rome and give them their own kingdom and make them rulers over everyone. But that is not at all what Christ came for. And in nowhere in the scriptures does that, does that thought get supported. But we see here that he is a king and a conqueror. Well, what is he a king and a conqueror over? The king is a conqueror of sin. We are held in captive. We are prisoners of war in the enemy's camp. And this psalm describes this glorious king full of splendor and full of praiseworthy adoration and he is a rightful ruler and he is that conqueror that comes and rescues us from the enemy's camp and gives us a new life a new beginning all old things are passed away the sin that used to so easily beset us now is gone. We no longer have to follow the dictates of sin. And in Hebrews chapter 1, Paul, writing to Hebrew believers, uses just about the entire chapter to use the Old Testament, and particularly the Psalms, to make the case for Christ to be the Messiah, that everything in the Old Testament points specifically to Jesus. And he uses Psalm 45, verse 6, in one of his, his arguments, and, he's, and in Hebrews 1, chapter 1, verse 8, he says, But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. And so we see here Christ, our King, being praised and lauded, his, his glory and his rulership being recognized. He knows he's Lord. He knows he's ruler. But he wants that praise. He wants that adoration because at the end of the day, it all goes to him anyway. Who else but God can take 
a sinful mortal man and completely eliminate his sin debt, take him out of the enemy's camp, take him out of the camp of the devil and sin and unrighteousness and make him a new creature and make him a holy, righteous, eternal creature who's in in eternity is destined to be with God. And oh, how wonderful a promise this is, that when we accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we give our hearts, our lives to him, and we allow him to cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. We can have that promise, and we can have that hope to be with him for eternity in heaven. And as always, God loves you, and we love you. We're praying for you. God bless you and have a fantastic week in the Lord.